All right, early in the headlines, we had news from Afghanistan about the Lisbon Treaty. We had the U.S. Secretary of State saying that the Afghan President, Hamid Karzai, fully supports Washington's strategy in Afghanistan. For more on that and the issues uh, circulating the uh, Lisbon Treaty, we're joined all the way from San Francisco by Gloria Lariva. She's with the ANSA Coalition. Welcome to the program. Uh, President Hamid Karzai signed a declaration with Andre Foss Rasmussen. NATO's head, which has triggered negative reactions back home in Afghanistan. What do you think the function of this declaration would be in the future of Afghanistan and the entire region? Well, the U.S. and NATO forces are simply declaring a new deadline, which will be moved ahead as they refuse to leave the country. And Karzai is between a rock and a hard place. He has recently been calling for, uh, strenuously calling for an end to the nighttime raids and the drone strikes, which are killing many civilians and destroying so many villages. And now he finds himself agreeing totally with the United States and NATO because of the pressure. You see that President Obama said, quote, if we're ponying up billions of dollars to help develop and build his country, then he has to understand uh, pay attention to our concerns, the concerns being U.S. domination of the region. Well, a phrase in the declaration says, quotes, U.S. forces transition will be conditions-based and not calendar-driven. Uh, what do you make of this? What it says is that if they can pacify a people who will accept uh, either a permanent occupation without a resistance or a domestic force that has been trained by the U.S. to pacify the population, then they could conceivably consider a withdrawal. Uh, it's, it's anathema to the will of the people who want the freedom and the end of, total end of the occupation. It's unacceptable that there is a deadline several years forward, and we and many others around the world are increasingly calling for an immediate end. We, of course, call for an immediate withdrawal of all U.S. and NATO troops. Well, uh, President Karzai has been very critical of civilian deaths in the country and uh, had, has asked for prior consultation for any air operations. Uh, how different is that? He was installed as a puppet. He came in on the tip of a bayonet, um, the military occupation of the country. And he continues to be under the thumb of the United States. At the same time, uh, as you see recently, he has been obligated to reflect more of the deep anger in the population of people by expressing opposition to the civilian deaths. I mean, there are so many villages which are being completely bulldozed. The people are terrified. Thousands of people have been murdered by the U.S. strikes, and now it looks like the military will be increasing its uh, deadliness, the fatal force that they will impose on people with M1 Abrams tanks, and, and, and a promise by the U.S. forces to be even more aggressive. Therefore, he may this weekend have spoken to endorse the U.S. and NATO plan, but very soon he will be forced to express more of what the people are demanding. As I said, he is between a rock and a hard place. And what will be necessary will be a growing resistance, which we are sure will take place. Well, the declaration signed by uh, Karzai also refers to regional cooperation with ISAF. Uh, what kind of a regional role is the U.S. expecting? Well, they have been behind the scenes pressuring Russia to accept transit for more troops, more military presence, and um, that's, that's part of it. There are many other agreements that we may not know of. At the same time, the other NATO forces are feeling pressure in their home countries, and they may be in the next months and years to come reducing their presence. So the U.S. will probably rely on more uh, terrifying weapons from the air, the tanks that can fire you know, up to a mile away, as well as missile strikes. There, there was a, the New York Times reported on November 16th that a village of 40 homes was completely destroyed. And that's just one example of what they're doing to the people. And the media here pat, tries to pacify the U.S. population 
by, first of all, the headlines say NATO casualties, and they try very hard not to say which ones are U.S. troops, which is, of course, the great majority. And then on the other hand, the people in, this, in the country do not see the disaster, destruction, and death that the U.S. is causing. All right. Um, I'm sorry we have to leave it there. Many thanks uh, to Gloria Lariva with the Anti-Coalition from San Francisco.